Hi, I'm Stephen Strait, you might know me from The Expanse, and here we are, I'm about to experience zero G for the first time for real. I can't even tell you how how this surpassed all of my wildest expectations <laughs> with what we were doing. And life-changing experience. Thank you so much for this. It just was absolutely wonderful. You're very welcome. Yeah. You flew like a natural. Fantastic. Pleasure to be with you. Welcome back to, to firm ground now. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers, brother. Okay. All right. Alex, so wonderful to meet you. Thanks hey, for taking the time. Likewise. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Guys. Oh, my goodness. My, my pleasure. It's an honor to be here. How was microgravity the first time? It was life changing. Like, I couldn't, I, there's no words to really verbalize the feel of it, I guess. Uh, just the, you know, it, it felt like my brain was taking in a different law of physics from my own physiology. I mean, for you, I mean, who's, you know, been to space and like, what, what is it like? It, what's the difference for being up? you know, up actually out there and then being on the flight. Well, being out there, of course, is in a total different environment. It's not only weightlessness, it's it's knowing that you're actually off the planet, that you're, you know, <laughs> that you're one of a few, sometimes only three people. Uh, when I was in space, there was a time when there was only three people, three people, persons of our species in space and the rest of it on that planet down there, you know, almost 8 billion down there. And uh, that makes you think, of course, you're in, in a vacuum, you have the radiation environment, you have the temperatures plus 130 degrees in the day side, minus 130. So it's it's a lot more than weightlessness. Sure. But that's a big part. Of course, of course. How, how amazing. And it's such an exciting time in in space and, and space exploration for human beings. It feels like there's a new will. I mean, especially with Artemis and the moon and all these amazing things that are going on, that this new class is graduating here after 14 years of the last class. Well, what's it like for, for you to, as a veteran uh, astronaut to be with these these new young astronauts that are coming up and, you know, hopefully, hopefully working with you and, and the rest of the ESA. Well, in one word, it's fantastic, yeah. right? I mean, it's it's really a great privilege for me that I can come back from space and actually have a job where I can make a difference, where I can use that experience to pass it on to the next generation and then work with them, right? Yeah. I'm still active in the core, but I have the, the new young colleagues come in and there's a transfer of knowledge and yeah. that's happening exactly here, right? In those planes and for the first time in their lives experiencing uh, weightlessness, uh, we were witnessing of that that I mean that's amazing to see it in their faces yeah. and then to me it's also great I mean it's it sort of reminds me of my missions to be in weightlessness again and yeah. actually one thought came up immediately uh, that we people usually forget down here on earth is when you spend half a year in space then the concept of gravity is a weird one so you get used and like overall I was up there almost a year right wow. you get used to the fact that stuff floats and then you come back on the planet and for the first time I realized what a strange concept that is that all of a sudden objects are drawn towards an imaginary point below the floor. Right. Just like that. Right. You know, that's a weird concept. It, it should actually be <laughs> like in space all the time. Right, for sure. And that transition coming home, I mean, what, what was that like coming, coming back after being up there for so many for so long? I mean, long yeah, that's time. again an experience that has multi multi multiple ways of, of impacting you, right? Sure. It's not just like the change in gravity. All, all that is already uh, pretty tough, right? Yeah. You, you all of a sudden you, you have a re-entry. We had more than six G's on re-entry. Like more, I had, I, I was pushed down in the seat with more than six times my own body weight. Wow. And then you land on the ground and all of a sudden like Earth's gravity has you back. You're used to half a year of, of lifting your arm with, without any force. And I was actually thinking, oh, some, somehow my spacesuit is trapped somewhere. I can't lift my arm until I realized, oh, I just have to command it more, right? <laughs> I have to actually activate my muscles more and then it works because I was well trained. We did a lot of sports up there, but sure. coming back, you just you have to tell your brain again how things work down here, how to walk, and it takes a while. I mean, after a few hours, most of it is already back to normal, but it's still, I mean, it's an adaptation. But that's not all, like, you, you, you come back into onto a planet. And so I landed on uh, in Kazakhstan, in a place that I've never, ever been before wow. in my life. Right. And still, it felt like coming home. 
Interesting. And that's right. very powerful because yes. you realize that when you leave, you, you think of your home as maybe your hometown or where you just spent the last five years or where your family lives. Then after a while, you see your own country and see this, you know, you identify yourself with it. Right. Then it's the continent. And at the end, it's the planet, right? right. You come back and it doesn't matter where you land, uh, you feel like coming home. And that's a big lesson learned for me. Uh, it's it's just trans forms you that it transforms your perspective if you see the earth as, as something small from the outside it's you look at it completely different than you know here behind us it looks like it's infinite sky is infinite yeah resources are infinite sure. why would we worry about that when you've seen it from the outside yeah it's it's just a, big, a different deal right you, you realize man this is just a small thing in the real black large cosmos and right. that yeah, that's a message you want to uh, bring home. Yes, yes, absolutely. It, it's it's one of the only things, maybe the only thing, where people are, where folks who actually have been up there talk about we as a as a species, yeah. as a, as opposed to countries or or nations or whatever. And the the, fra the fragility of that little jewel that we have, the Earth, you yeah. know, and how to take care of that. And I, I I know that there's a lot of missions and a lot of work being done on on Earth observation as well for for climate science and to help save. The planet. Um, can you speak to, to some of the stuff you were doing up in up in space for a year, and any particular expertise you were you were excited to bring to the yeah. table? Oh, that's a, we did a lot of experiments. Uh, I, about seven hundred uh, experiments in in the two expeditions that I've been on. Wow! Uh, lots of different areas of science, and uh, what they all have in common is that uh, usually any area of science. They work on Earth, but at some stage, people hit a wall where they have to have an obstacle that they need to get over. They need some piece of data to continue in that field. And that piece of data they can only get in this very special environment. This lab that we have in space, the International Space Station, uh, up there is the only place on Earth, uh, together with the Chinese Space Station now, sure. where we have permanent weightlessness, where we can actually do experiments to, uh, to fill those gaps, to jump those obstacles, bring the experiments back uh, home, and then have people continue down here. And for example, you know, one of the things that we did was was uh, uh, um, cancer drug research. Like wow. we bring a, a cancer tumor up there and it mm. grows in weightlessness much different than in a petri dish, uh, two dimensional flat petri dish that it does in the lab on the ground. Wow. Up there it grows like uh, more like in the body, like a sphere. Oh, interesting. And that means uh, drugs also act differently on it. Uh, so wow. much, like the drugs that we test uh, against cancer up there, they act uh, much more similar than they would in a real human body where we cannot test those drugs right. uh, until they're safe. And so that's just one of many reasons on why going to space is actually really, really important. Then after that, with the results, people down here continue until they hit the next obstacle. And there, that's the transformation that we do. Like uh, We uh, go forth and back with the scientists, thousands of scientists. Uh, wow. Uh, all the time and that's uh, a, a great privilege for me as a scientist I'm a geophysicist so amazing uh, it was great to work with former colleagues and you know to get the scientific intuition uh, again you know it's, sure. it's a lot of fun to do that up on the space station incredible and and looking forward is there is there something in particular that you're looking forward to in Anissa's mission going forward <laughs> yeah you're already hinting it I think yeah. it's the Artemis missions of course going to the moon is going to be the next great adventure that uh, lets us use all the experience that we uh, gained on the internet National Space Station to go forward to the next big uh, step, which is, you know, you could call it uh, our eighth continent, the moon, right? It's just a few days out um, and it's, it's there. We don't know it. We've just been there, planted a flag on a few missions, you know, uh, uh, half a century back. Right. Now it's the time, it's the second wave that we see in exploration, uh, that we also saw in the, uh, the exploration of other continents or Antarctica. Sure. The second wave is not about planting the flag. The second wave is about sustainability, about doing research there. And that's what we're going to do on the moon. That second wave is coming up and it's an exciting time to be in the space program because now all those missions that uh, when I was a kid saw as science fiction, right? They're getting real now and, and you know a lot about science fiction right so uh, I'm, I think you're, you must be as excited as as I am yeah. that um, this is not just like in a Hollywood bunker but this is actually real and this is to me it's fantastic to be 
part of this program, potentially um, I have a chance to uh, to fly on one of those missions. Uh, of course, my colleagues and I are hoping on that. Yeah. Uh, with the experience that we gained, this is not a bad chance. So um, maybe um, I'm going to uh, be able to bring that perspective home uh, to look at our planet, uh, not just you know from a, a 400 kilometers distance, but uh, from the moon where you can, and that's what my colleagues the moonwalkers uh, told me uh, about, uh, like Harrison Schmidt, for example. I, I, I talked with him once in a while, and, and and they told me that if you're on the moon and you put your thumb up, yeah. and you cover the Earth, it's gone. Nice. And wow. just let that thought sink into your brain. You're somewhere where you can cover your entire home planet with your thumb. Right. And I think that's a it's a it's an even more powerful perspective to bring home. Yeah, the pale blue dot. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. Thank really you. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Uh, Thanks. So and much. I'm glad you could experience this with us. It was an honor. It was yeah. an honor. Thank you. I can't even describe how amazing that experience was. It totally blew my mind. It was beyond all of my wildest expectations. And to actually feel zero G in real life, what a trip. And then to see the actual plane doing it out the window, totally crazy. I mean, diving down, going straight up and how the perception of all of these things change. If you want to see me later on this year at ESA's Open Day or ESA S-Tech in October, I'll see you there.